Right, back live with you tonight on In Focus, and thanks for staying on. A fintech company contracted to disburse monthly NS Fast allowances is challenging allegations leveled against it that saw the scheme CEO Andile Nokoko fired this week. Izaga Holdings is one of four providers selected by the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. It's facing numerous allegations regarding its involvement in the payment program and the subsequent tender cancellation. Right, let's speak now to FF Student Command Leader Sihe Lonzi on these developments. Good to have you. Thank you very much for your time. No, thank you very much and uh, greetings to your viewers at all. How transparent has this process that is conducted by the board been, uh, especially for yourself as the, as the student body, but the company now is, is actually crying foul, saying they are concerned about a lack of transparency, uh, for example, in how the board uh, is, is now dealing with the report. They've been requesting this report and, and they're seemingly not getting it. I think the, the lesson that we learn even from the, the report itself that comes from you know, Advocate Ngatobi and Workman's is that even at the beginning, there's been no transparency at all, even at the level of the appointment of these service providers. And that's what the EFF Students Command and many students in South Africa, if you would have seen, protesting throughout the year, saying, where do these companies come from? Do they have banking licenses? Do they have uh, VAT certification? And did, was due process followed to have them come and distribute allowances for students? And I think we're vindicated by the report. Uh, and what's funny is that when the board accepts the report, and says, yes, companies were appointed without following the NSFAS procurement processes. In a way, they are exposing themselves. They are agreeing that their own systems, uh, be it NSFAS at executive level, but even at an oversight, yeah. they were engaged in corrupt activities. They were engaged in irregular activities. So there's been no transparency at the beginning, and even now we don't see transparency. For example, why is the report not made public even up until today? Because South Africans need to know what exactly happens what happened with the appointment of four companies that had the, the responsibility to, to distribute close to 47 billion rand of student allowances. Yeah. So there's no transparency. And what do you think happened here? Yeah, I mean, because if we look at the Sunday, uh, Sunday uh, uh, reporting of news, the, 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 the CEO now pointing fingers at the, the, the board, uh, in fact, the chairperson of the board and a senior government official saying, well, his suspension mm. was linked to some lucrative off-take agreements between companies. So when we did our press uh, uh, briefing today, so one of the things that the EFF Students Command will be doing is to open criminal charges against NSFAS. And we want to make this point because we don't want to dwell into the, 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 the fight on media, the leaks and all of that. News 24 is not a police station. Newsroom is not a police station. SABC is not a police station. If the CEO has concrete evidence which links anyone in NSFAS to these corrupt dealings, he must go to the police station and open the case. And the same applies with the board of NSFAS. It's not enough for them to simply say, we're getting rid of these companies or we're firing so-and-so or we're going to have disciplinary hearings. They must go and open a case. We are going to open a case. And then we leave it to the prosecuting authorities to then be able to pinpoint this one was involved, this one was involved, and whoever was involved in this must be arrested. We want to see people behind bars because we know how the ANC operates. The ANC, by the way, doesn't really fire people. It just redeploys. That's why you see them in ministers. A minister is deployed in one ministry. They fail in this ministry. They are removed. South Africans celebrate for a moment. Before you know it, he's working in another ministry. So we don't want a redeployment of criminals anywhere. Everyone who was involved in this irregular appointment of these uh, four companies must be called to account. They must be criminally charged and the NPA must do its work. Yeah. Why would you not be satisfied with just the CEO being fired? It, it's 47 billion rands. Yeah. There's no way that anyone could believe that one person could facilitate that. It's either there's just foolishness in the office or those people just don't know what they're doing. So all of them, even internally within the NSR's executive, even those who sit at the procurement, we must know how did this guy manage to do this thing on his own. So... We are not convinced that one person would have been involved in this. So all of those people must come and account. That's why we're opening a case, because we want the police to come and investigate. We're not satisfied with them saying, we're just going to have disciplinary hearings to find out which staff members were involved. No, we don't want a commission of inquiry. Yeah. We want everyone who stole the money of students to be arrested. So the CEO has been pointed. He must stop going to the media and saying, this one is also involved, this one is also involved. He must go and open a case at the police station. 
and then we take it from there because we are opening a case at the police station. So if he knows of any other people who are involved, he must do the same, go to the police station, open a case so these people can be criminally charged. So you're opening a case against him? We're opening a case against NSFAS. NSFAS, what, what, what are you charging them? So we're charging them fraud and corruption. Because okay. I think, like, as I mentioned, the report is quite clear in terms of the NSFAS procurement processes were not followed, but also the PFMA was also not followed. And again, what's funny is that the board accepts this. So in a way, they are, they are, they are accepting that, yes, we as an institution were engaged in irregular dealings when it came to these four companies. In the press, I said the police should just enter NSFAS office in Cape Town and just start arresting people. Because they've accepted it to say, we agree with the report. Because right. ordinarily they would say, we want to take the report under review. You know the, how the typical Stalingrad yeah. ANC approach. Yeah. But this time around they're saying, no, we agree with the report. These companies were appointed irregularly. We did not follow the processes. Yeah. Why is the police but not they, they're saying it's, it's one man who, who didn't follow the process, and hence he's, he's, it's a fireable offence. Uh, his conduct uh, justifies termination, and hence they've terminated them, the, the, their, his services. But the, 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 the investigators or the, the, the lawyers who are, who are doing this investigation are saying that even the bid evaluation committee members uh, would still need to go through some disciplinary. Uh, inquiry. That's precisely the point we're making. In fact, we are not surprised because, in fact, our view is that there's a systemic rot within NSFAS. You will remember the Special Investigative Unit yeah. earlier this year came out and said NSFAS together working with the universities. So the universities must not be absolved from NSFAS corruption. NSFAS working together with the universities has been overpaying to the universities. In a way, they've been paying fictitious students, they've been paying bogus students. There have been situations where a student would apply to NSFAS, not finish their application, maybe gets awarded a bursary by some private donor, but that, that student remains on the NSFAS system, and the money keeps getting paid on a monthly basis. We saw the corruption in student accommodation as well. So there's a systemic problem in NSFAS, and our view is that you can chop and change and remove this one, but if we don't deal with it, and if people don't see that action is taken, real action, not superficial cosmetic action, but real action taken against people who are stealing money of poor students. We're never going to be able to resolve the problem of NSFAS. Yeah. The company maintains, though, that one, there was no possible relationship with the CEO except for the professional relationship, but two, that their relationship was not collusive in any nature, saying that allegation is devoid of any substance. Of course, the company must go and account in court. This is why, so we don't want to be engaged in a public debate. We don't want to be engaged in public discourse. The fact of the matter here is that money was stolen from poor students. We don't want to, we don't want to write opinion pieces about what we think, what is the definition of conflict of interest, do we think the CEO is guilty or not. We are going to the police station or opening a case. And then everyone who has a case to answer must go and explain themselves on the talks. So we, we are shying away from this trap of wanting to be stuck in a di public discourse, trying to be debating who could have stolen, who, is not st who hasn't stolen, who is involved, who is not involved. The law enforcement authorities must do their work. This money is not even enough. What makes it even more painful for us? What we saw at Walter Sisulu University, it closed for months because students were not getting their allowances. And many other TVETs and institutions across South Africa, students are either not getting their allowances or their money that they are getting in the so-called direct payment cards are not the money that they are supposed to be getting. So even when the money is not enough, these people still find a way to steal from poor students. How? What type of a government is that? What type of an institution that's supposed to be a financial aid scheme would steal even from the very little that is not enough to fund all the poor students in South Africa? Have you done your, your calculations? I mean, if you were to look at the deductions that have been done by these four companies, uh, which uh, the contracts have now been terminated uh, over the, the last couple of months would amount to? So we, I don't have the exact numbers, but part of the biggest problems we had, and I think we wrote, when we wrote to the minister as well as the Portfolio Committee of Higher Education, we made this point, to say that there are even inconsistencies. So you and me will be both funded by NSFAS, and let's say for argument's sake we're supposed to get 2,000 rands. Yeah. You will find yourself getting 1,800 in your account, I will find myself with 1,500. So, so not only are they corrupt and greedy, 
but there was also just gross inefficiency, gross incompetence in terms of the onboarding process. So even the, the transaction fees, which were extremely exorbitant, extremely expensive, but even the transaction fees were not consistent across the board. You just wake up, you are charged 50 rand. Yeah. This one wakes up, they are charged 35 rand. This one wakes up, they are charged 12 rand. So even at a level of competence, let's park the fact that these uh, uh, companies are appointed irregular. Let's just look at the competence. Are they able to do the job? That's why we ask, do these people have banking licenses? Do these people have VAT certificates? Do these people have experience in the financial services industry? Those are very important questions which now speak to do they have the capacity to administer 47 billion rands? We're not talking about smaller ones. 47 billion rands covers budgets of many departments in South Africa. Do they have the capacity? No, they don't have. And on top of that, they were appointed irregular. So, I mean, we've raised kind of some of these issues around the inco inconsistencies on, on the deductions. And the answer that we got was that students would be transferring monies to uh, other financial institutions and when they do that then it would depend what that financial institution would would charge so hence there will be that discrepancy so why are you privatizing the the, the, the distribution of private allowances i think the former president makes the, the same point if the principle is that we are trying to move away from the so-called big banks because they also charge students high costs why then do you bring in a group of individuals a group of companies which are going to repeat the same thing that you're running away from. Ideally, if my contract with NSFAS says I need 2,000 rands or 2.5 or 4.5 thousand, that must be the amount that the student gets. The fees must be dis discussed between NSFAS and whichever service provider they're working with. If the cost of my groceries, if the cost of my sanitary towels, if the cost of stationery, of textbooks is 5,000 rand, the student must have the full 5,000 rands so that they can be able to use it for their educational purposes. The costs must be a debate between government and their friends that they are appointing in these uh, uh, companies. So the transaction fees must not even be a debate to, to begin with right. because we are not dealing with a commercial space where people are trying to make profit in this sector. We are dealing with a sector that is dealing with, number one, poor students, but secondly, it's an intervention of government as a welfare government to say, we want to make education fashionable in South Africa, we want to make education accessible in South Africa. So why charge someone who can't even afford to go to education? Why want to add an extra cost in the form of transaction fees? So our view is that if I should be getting 2,000, I must get 2,000 rent. The transaction fees, the government will nego negotiate service with whichever provider. service provider. Sihe, appreciate your time. Thank you very much for coming on. Sihe Lonzi, EFF Student Command Leader. They're opening a case, that's what they're saying. They're not going to do public debate, going straight to the South African Police Service.